Hey guys, I'm Amit Kumar and welcome to this video in which we are going to introduce Apex tests. Now to facilitate the development of robust error-free code, Apex supports the creation and execution of unit tests. Unit tests are class methods that verify whether a particular piece of code is working properly. Unit test methods take no arguments commit no data to the database and send no emails. Such methods are flagged with the at the rate is test annotation in the method definition. Unit test methods must be defined in test classes that is classes annotated with at the rate is test. Now point to note here is the test method keyword is now deprecated. So in place of that, we use the at the rate is test annotations on classes and methods instead. So Apex provides us the facility to create unit tests. Unit tests are nothing but testing individual piece of code. And for creating unit tests, we create test methods in classes. So these methods are test methods as they have been annotated with at the rate is test and these classes are test classes as the class is also annotated with the at the rate is test. Now priorly we were using test method keyword for all the methods to become a test method but now it's being deprecated and we use at the rate is test annotation for the same. In addition, before you deploy Apex or package it for the app exchange, the following must be true. Unit tests must cover at least 75% of your Apex code. So the code coverage should be at least 75% so that package it up for the app exchange. When deploying Apex to a production org, each unit test in your organization namespace is executed by default. So calls to system.debug are not counted as part of the Apex code coverage. So we need not to cover system.debug statements. Test methods and test classes are not counted as part of Apex code coverage. So if you are having any test method or if you are having any test classes, they won't be considered as part of the Apex code coverage. While only 75% of your Apex code must be covered by test, don't focus on this percentage. Instead, make sure that every use case of your application is covered, including positive and negative cases, as well as bulk and single records. So uh, if you want to package your code, definitely you need to have 75% of code coverage. But as the Salesforce suggests, don't focus on this 75%. Try to cover as much of the code as possible. Try to cover as much of the cases as possible. When deploying Apex to production org, this code coverage is important because when you would be deploying it to the production org, all the unit tests will be executed. So they should run successfully. All the tests should run successfully. Now, two things are not part of the Apex code coverage. They won't be considered. They won't be counted, which are system.debug statements as well as all the test methods and test classes and make sure all classes and triggers must compile successfully. So it's pretty much of talk of Apex tests. Let's see the things practically. Now here we are in our org and this is the last class we created with the Visual Studio code. I'm deleting this class for now. And there is no class right now in our org. Now we are using developer console as it provides the best way to test the things to check out the code coverage and all. So let's start with developer console itself. Now for that, I am first of all running the test. So click on the test menu and click on run all. Now right now there are no tests to run. There are no classes for the code coverage. And you can check that by clicking on the test tab itself. So you can see the overall coverage showing over here is 0%. There is no classes shown over here and no test run is also available. So let's create a class first. So I'm creating a simple class like uh, arithmetic class. And for now, just understand all the classes that we are creating should have this class keyword and should have this public access specifier. Now what they are and why they are, we will discuss that later down the line, maybe in the next level of the course. Now I'm creating a method over here. Now a few more syntax that you should remember right now and that we will understand later. All the method will have a name. So my method name will be add. Now all the methods should have an access specifier and by default it should have 
public if you want to access those methods you can also have other access specifiers as well but if you want to access them give them public we will provide static keyword and we will also provide a return type generally we used to do void but this time i am using integer every function should have this pair of parentheses these small brackets and inside that if you want to pass any value to these methods you can pass that so i want to pass two values so and both of them should be integer so i'm uh, writing it as integer num1 and integer num2 now what this method will do it will just create another integer num3 add num1 and num2 and store the result in num3 and finally return num3 so if i will save this it will save successfully everything is fine syntax wise it is completely correct and now in the test section you can see the code coverage is zero there is one class over here named as arithmetic with three lines and zero out of them is covered so now how we can cover this up so for this we need to create a test class apex works with a test development approach that means we used to create a test class as soon as we create a class in apex so right now i'm great going to create a test class for it so i'm naming it as arithmetic test so that later on i can understand that which test class is testing which class itself so this is the arithmetic test class and i'm making it as test class by using at the rate is test so i'm using this annotation just before the class name so that the apex can understand that this is a test this is a test class all the test classes has this run test button if you go to the normal class you won't get that but as i have used this at the rate is test i will get this run test option now i'm creating a test method test methods are generally private uh, static they are always void you can give any name to these test methods but i give the name according to the method to which we are testing so i am testing add so i will give it a name as add test test methods don't accept any parameters so that's it so this is our test method and to make it a test method i will use at the rate is test annotation with it now uh, we need to provide the test thing over here we need to actually test whether this certain method is working or not how we create tests and all is something we will discuss later on but right now i am just showing you and i know few things you won't understand right now but generally we start a test by typing in test dot start test and we end a test by typing in test dot stop test now inside this start test and stop test section we need to call this method we need to call this add method so how we will do that we will name the class which is arithmetic dot we name the method and now we need to pass two values that is let's pass 10 and 20 to it definitely this method will return a value which i am holding in result variable now what i want to test i want to test that this result should have value 30 because this add method is adding those two values and returning the value so the value of result should be 30 now that i will test with system dot assert equals now system dot assert equals is having two versions uh, let's use the second version now in the second version we provide expected value so what i am expecting is 30 we provide the actual value which is coming so that is result and we provide a message in form of string now it will print this message if the test will fail so i am writing here actual and expected result is not matching for add method and now intentionally i am failing this test by passing 3 over here so that i can show you what value it is printing so let's click on this run test so now you can see the code coverage is 100% but the test is failing so if you will click on this collapse button open it up and click on this add test you can see what it will print so it's printing actual and expected result is not matching for add method the thing that i have printed here it is printing over there so this thing will be printed once the test will fail now i have intentionally failed the test definitely it should return 30 so i'm saving it and i'm running the test again and now you see test ran successfully and even the code coverage is 100 percent 
so if I will click on this past test thing you can see there is no error and result is result is completed second thing the code coverage you can click on this and you can see the code coverage over here in the class or you can directly come to the class and see the code coverage section it will show that arithmetic test add test method is giving you the 100% code coverage so that's how we create a test class if anything you are unable to understand right now don't worry later on i will explain you in detail how to create tests for classes once we are comfortable with classes and triggers so that marks the end of this video see you soon in the next video till then thank you and take care